Good evening. evening. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to all of you who are uh, here with us tonight, Uh, particularly those who might be visiting with us online. We welcome you as well, too. Uh, If you like what you see, please go ahead and like this video. Uh, Share it with all of your friends. It's a great way for people to hear the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. It's great to be back. Uh, I've been on vacation the last couple of weeks, so it is really nice to be back here with all of you at Grace. We had a wonderful trip. Thank you very much for providing for those vacations for us. Uh, we're still in that vacation season, so I did want you to be aware that now Pastor Kyle is on vacation for the next two weeks, and also Deaconess Marissa Uh, is attending a deaconess conference. There's an annual deaconess conference. You might recall uh, when I served as their spiritual advisor, I would regularly uh, be at that. So she's in St. Louis up until next weekend. We'll look forward to her return then. All right, this week uh, we're going to be highlighting two more of our ministries here at Grace. So we're going to be highlighting our altar guild and also our trustees. You can stop by uh, the table after the service this evening, uh, and people will be there to tell you all about what they do. That's everything I have to share with you right now. So at this point, I'm going to invite everybody to please stand as we call upon our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Make my faith. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I see. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Oh, Lord. I confess that through my thoughts, words, and actions, I worry about my problems in this life as if I face them alone. I also get so distracted that I neglect what matters most, your word and sacrament. Forgive me and remind me that you are my light and my salvation. Bear my Almighty God and his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Jesus at your word we are gathered all to hear you let our hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear you by your teaching sweet and holy draw Sense and sight lie in deepest. 
the Spirit to hear your word and know the one thing needful, that by your word and spirit we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let the little water be brought, and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. 
Well, I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourself, and after that you may pass on, <clears throat> since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three says a fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set before them. And he stood by them under the, the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is Sarah your wife? And he said, she is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The epistle reading comes from Colossians, the first chapter. You who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body a flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If, indeed, you continue in faith, stay and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is in Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Humility there. 
steps ever training. If I learn from Jesus this knowledge divine, the blessing of heavenly wisdom is mine. Nothing have I Christ to your crimson colored blood your death on the cross has death wholly defeated and thereby my righteousness fully completed salvation's white raiments I there One thing is needful, all others are vain. I count all but loss that I Christ may obtain. To say that the Christian church in America has had issues over the course of the last few years would be quite the understatement. In fact, while driving around Cincinnati last week, I noticed any number of large, beautiful, old church buildings with for sale or no trespassing signs, all locked up and fenced in. States that experienced lengthy shutdowns taught us to sleep in on Sunday morning. And political differences have all but eliminated a third of the people in our nation from attending church services because they don't believe that this is a safe place for them to come anymore. It's true. I read all kinds of different political commentary. I read it all the time almost daily, not because I like it, but because I have to keep up. And it's remarkable how many of the replies to that commentary vilify Christianity. The reality is, though, that a congregation like Grace is a blessing to its community. Even though we own a large property that's not taxed, we employ a significant number of people who do what? They pay taxes. We pay our own payroll taxes. Our scholars go on to become productive members of society here in St. Pete and beyond. While we know God's right from wrong and aren't afraid to speak it when called upon, we speak that truth in love, always with the goal of loving our neighbor into a relationship with Christ. The reality is that Grace Lutheran is a safe place where sinners are gathered to find rest for our souls. Grace, like any of Christ's churches, is a hospital for sinners. So yes, it has been rough sledding for the Christian church in America. And for that matter, Americans in general over the last little while. And yet, it's not that different from what the people experienced in first century Colossae. That there really is 
nothing new under the sun or thunderstorm, as the case may be. Consider the following. Colossae had once been a proud city, populous, wealthy, cultured, known far and wide throughout Asia Minor for the quality of its wool. Then the first earthquake hit, and things were never the same. Now, as Paul wrote, it was a place in full decline, known only locally by the surrounding towns and villages, considered a third-rate fabric producer, and then also known for its crazy angel cult that was shared by its Jewish, Gnostic, and pagan residents. The Christian church there was small, and its pastor, a man named Epaphras, was struggling to hold it together against some form of false teaching. Well, while we don't know exactly what that teaching was, it was certainly like all other false teachings, some form of works righteousness, including especially the keeping of a lot of the old covenant Jewish rites. What is more, you need to know tonight that false teaching is always attractive to us. It's attractive to you because of the sinner inside. We're still, oftentimes, now strike that, most of the time, false teaching leads to poor lifestyle choices. We'll call that outward sin. For some, and this is a temptation for Christians, it's a religious extremism that completely forgoes the good gifts that God gives through his creation. Well, for others, it leads to an abuse of that creation, immorality of all type, things like dissolving God's design for marriage, while others still get frustrated with such things, so much so that they start to hate those who are ignoring God's ways, rather than loving neighbor as self. It happened. In the first century, every bit as much as it happens today. So don't be deceived. All of us sin and fall short of God's glory. All of us, me, you, he, she, all of us sin and fall short, which means that all of us are in this mess together. That's true for believers and unbelievers alike. And so as Paul wrote, he was in prison. Uh, perhaps the house arrest mentioned at the end of Acts. In, in prison for the faith. That's where Paul wrote this letter to the Colossians from. Uh, Epaphras was with him too. No doubt seeking apostolic guidance to combat the false teachings that were threatening his little flock. So Paul sent another preacher, Tychicus, along with the slave Onesimus, a Colossian native. He sent them with letters to the Christians there. Uh, honestly, he could well have written this letter set before us tonight to us here in St. Pete today. Because most certainly you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he, that is the Lord, has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. 
Now, in the section of this epistle that you heard when you were here last weekend, or, or for people like me who were traveling, heard as you watched the service, great job of, of reading, by the way, Carl, I really appreciated it. Thank you. In the section that we heard last weekend, and the little part left out in between that and this, Paul laid the foundation for today's by appealing to the Lord Jesus Christ as the very image of the invisible God. By him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, Paul wrote, visible and invisible, whether thrones or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Uh oh, and by the way, the creation is gifted to everyone, whether they know it or not, believe it or not, it's a gift from God. God's providential care extends for all people. It is a fact, too, that the end of the world has been delayed for the sake of God's Son. And please also remember that it is the holy triune God's desire that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. As for the Christian church, the community of the saints, Paul writes for us that Christ is our head. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So then he continues, If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. If you hold fast to that faith, you will be saved from God's wrath against sin. Even the sins that you continue to commit. Can you imagine that? You see, in the end, your God is the Holy Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose nature is love. Knowing that, then, what Paul wrote next might be a bit troubling. It was troubling for me. Uh, listen as we move towards the end of things for this evening. Paul continues, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church. How could this be? How could it be that there might be something lacking in anything that the Lord Jesus Christ has done. The answer lies in that saying that I so often repeat, and that I've repeated again for you tonight, that your God is indeed the Holy Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose nature is love. Like any good parent, he gives his children meaning and purpose by giving them things to do. Think about that. The man and the woman whom God created in his image were to be the creation's caregivers. In a different letter, the one to the Ephesians, Paul wrote that, for by grace you were saved through faith, and this not your doing. It's the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our dear sisters in Christ, Sylvia and Deaconess Marissa, have organized weekly opportunities for you to explore ways to serve here at Grace. Such service is a part of the good works which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. 
This week, we're highlighting our trustees and our author guild. Trustees oversee the property at Grace. They, they do need a few additional members on their board, but more than that, all of us need to take an active role in caring for this property. After all, this building is the place that you come in order to hear the gospel message about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for your forgiveness in life. It's also a campus where young scholars come during the week in order to grow and learn. Many of them end up being baptized during their time with us. Some go on to receive their first Holy Communion and then to have their faith confirmed as well. Always an interested party in baptisms and Holy Communions because they set up for those. The altar guild cares for the chancel area and they don't stop there. Really, the whole sanctuary is their dominion. I had the opportunity to serve as the sacristan, a fancy theological term for head of the altar guild at the seminary chapel. It was a joyful service. Really, though, all service is joyful because it's what God made us for. That's exactly St. Paul's point in the epistle reading for tonight. In the first 20 verses of chapter 1, he laid out the objective truths of all that Jesus has done for our sake and our salvation. And then in verse 21, he personalized it by switching to the second person. You. What Jesus has done He's done for you. And by virtue of your baptism into his death and resurrection, all that he has done is yours. Therefore, in Christ, your sin is set aside as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered by God the Father again. The, the communion meal that you will soon eat is a reminder of this for yourself and for others around you. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. True to form. God's service for you this day transitions there in that meal to your service to others. Another good work prepared in advance. Led to the altar by the Spirit, the Son presents you there to the Father, holy and blameless above reproach. Praise be the holy name of Jesus forever. Amen. Please stand now and join with me in praising God's name in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, not of God, light of light, very God, God of very God, begotten not, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father Mother and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the Holy In our prayers this evening, we do remember all who are listed on our prayer page, but we add the following uh, prayer requests. For the family of Granville Cather, who passed through death to life eternal this past week from cancer. Uh, he was the father-in-law of Melody, uh, the former Melody Span, now Melody Cather, I, I would guess. Also, for the family of Jim Roman, who was a high school classmate of mine who passed through death to life eternal as well. For Val Zacker, who has entered um, uh, hospice care. And for Kennedy Cunningham, a five-year-old girl suffering from leukemia. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you have made your word fully known in the person of your Son and in the proclamation of his holy gospel. Bring many out of this world and into the communion of your church to share the riches he has won for us in his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your minister, St. Paul, suffered for the sake of the, of the Christ's church and called both Jews and Gentiles into Christ's one body. Sustain the apostolic unity he forged, and grant your ministers faithful hearts to endure suffering in our day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, you chose Abraham and Sarah, though barren, to bring forth the promised child. Grant your heavenly comfort to those without children. Hear their prayers, and grant their godly desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and patience to all in authority, especially our president, governor, legislatures. Let them serve with integrity, always for the benefit of those under their leadership, to the maintenance of righteousness, and to the hindrance and punishment of wickedness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your people suffer in this life before they reach your heavenly kingdom. Sustain Stephen, Joan, Jennifer, Cynthia, Clint, Jan, Feather, Phil, Megan, Kathy, Chris, Sandy, Pam, Deborah, Ava, Brian, Dennis, Kiara, Anita, Ginger, Deborah, Charles. Patty, Teresa, Lynn, Robert, Donald, David, and Paul, Mike, Tom, Michael, Clarence, Paul, George, Joyce, Jan, Melvin, Leilani, Stan, Cricket, Rob, Jessica, Jan, Cricket. Also be with the white. Cunningham, our White, uh, and Cather family, the Roman family, and finally with Kennedy and Val. Give them the same spirit you gave your servant Paul, that they may endure in their holy faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, when you appeared to Abraham in Mamre, you, he offered a feast of which he himself did not partake. Receive our offerings this day and grant us bold faith to partake of the body and blood of Christ for our forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, our offering plates are up front. Those of you who are watching us online, uh, if you are so moved to make an offering to the ministry at Grace, uh, there is information about that on our church's website. Please stand. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O oh Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ into the flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed is he who comes in the Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And we greet one another with the Lord's peace.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and keep you steadfast in the truth, faith, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. And let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us for the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.